Hi, this is Kalpun Piso. My brain is creating thoughts. This is February 2011. And uh, I'm going to talk today about science versus religious psychosis. And thanks to the neurological disorder of God belief, we're having all the turmoil in the world, especially in Libya. People getting killed all the time. Thanks to a dictator that was ruled for 40 years. Islam psychotic. He's always talking about, uh, it's deluded. But that's thanks to religion. We have a lot of deluded people in the United States. Michelle Bachman, Sarah Pellin, fundamentalist Christians, ministers, they believe in resurrecting zombies. It's no difference. Religious believer and mental illness. I want to talk about science and, uh, and religious beliefs. How they, the religious psychotics, are against the atheism, mental health, produce science. Because if you believe in God, you have a problem with your brain, you'll never be a good scientist. That's a fact. Oh, and don't bring up Newton. Newton was a schizophrenic, 17th century, and he was searching for the Philosopher's Stone. He was an alchemist. So, please don't bring him up. Or Galileo. The whole Christ, of course, is infected, and the reason they were not as good of a scientist as they could have been is because of their infection of believing, resurrecting zombies. The fact is, we are all evolved mutated primates that create God with our brains. Accepting the delusions of God as reality when the brains malfunction. Here's evolution, how things evolve. Um, from about 365 million years ago, this one's backwards, sorry about that. But you see the one bone, two bone, little bone, finger program, um, already set up in the earliest limbed animals, more distant and so forth, we begin to see the assembly of this pattern. Um, let me, so here's, a, here's an early limbed animal, and then you have the other creatures on the tree, uh, each one further away or more distantly related uh, to this, the two limbed animals. But you see an early limbed animal here, and it has the one bone, two bone finger uh, pattern. Tiktaalik has one bone, two bones, has other more distal bones, which we can actually compare in some ways to this cohort. And as you now, can we see, have five fingers in our hands. Still see is this one bone, not seven, bone, eight, or nine. Ray pattern. My toes that I use for locomotion. Uh, thanks to atheism, the science, uh, I can actually we have X-rays and also product of sane brain. Only a sane brain can understand science and radiography. And the same brain is one that knows that there is no God. Look at this. My feet are just like those of animals. ...of these kinds of fish in fins with fin webbing. To understand and trace this pattern and its adaptive diversity in the Devonian, things get less sure as we begin to look at... Oh, there's no God. There's nothing fish. zapping anything so into here existence. here you have a fin of a, of a lungfish. Here you have fins of paddlefish and sharks and so forth. And when you see, you have a certain, what appears to be a very big gap between extant limbs and extant fins. Although, as you get into lunged fish, no surprise, you start to have one bone at the base, just like all these other creatures, as opposed to many bones at the base. Do that. To begin to really understand what ha happens to the same appendage in different creatures, yep. and for better and to better and worse, you can make some hypotheses in bone in all these different creatures, and then it gets a little tenuous as we go further out in the, in the fin, but we can still do this to the fin. But we can still do this about, you know, an organ. An organ has parts, and then an organ also has processes that make those parts. So you can think about the same thing at many different sort of hierarchical levels, so that, you know, you can think about the model, this sort of obnoxious car here, the, the uh, Hummer, right? And you can trace the history of the, the car, the Hummer, over time, from, you know, small sort of obnoxious car to big obnoxious car to sort of smaller recession time uh, obnoxious car. And then you can dissemble it into its pieces, its parts, which also have a history. The tires have a history. Uh, of, of, of processes that are behind them. The windshield, uh, the, uh, the lights, the windshield wipers, and so forth, all have histories. So you can think of the, the sameness and the history of the whole entity, the car, the Hummer in this case, and you can think of the sameness and the history of the parts that make it up as well. But you can also think of the history of the processes that make these parts, the, the vulcanization, the processes behind the making of the rubber and the steel and so forth. The level has explanatory power. Indeed, 
the, a, a Hummer and a Prius appear to have very little in common, yet at the level of the, um, have four wheels. the processes that make the car, Everything. the tires and so the forth, same. they share quite a bit. Yeah. Since I'm not an ignorant cry psychotic, my Toyota Prius doesn't accelerate by itself. So, it's like all analogies, it's, it's limited. But when you think about a limb with a skeleton inside, you can ask about the limb and the, the, the history and the, the, the sameness. And the, 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 sameness. the problem in the United States is cry psychosis. They don't teach science to children, especially the parents that are infected with cry psychosis. Uh, they have churches every Sunday, constantly, constantly keeping the lies and the r mental retardation infecting and corrupting children's brains. This is the problem. And the United States is behind in science because of that, the children. And that's disgusting. And that's due to the cry psychosis infection. Uh, people don't realize in this 21st century, adults, that they corrupt the mind of children or their kids corrupting their brains if they are infected with uh, religious beliefs, or believing God and nonsense like that. And that's the problem. Uh, does anybody remember the scope trials? You know, that the 1800s, they don't allow... Uh, uh, the teaching of, uh, of evolution, and Darwin, and it happened in, <laughs> in Dayton, uh, Tennessee. Because this, this guy wanted to teach uh, Darwin, evolution, it just came up. And uh, all the cry psychotics uh, protested, and they still do it today, in the 21st century. That's what the problem is. Scientific ideas say so they can't teach the Darwinian theory of evolution, which every scientist views as the basis for, for science. Exactly. I mean, the, the exactly. world's going crazy, he thought. Yeah. The controversy had been brewing quietly ever since Darwin announced his findings. The origin of species in 1859. And uh, surprisingly, for a book that is so technical, the book was a bestseller. Ah, when they read the pages of this book, finally we have an explanation for these things. Or they saw something uh, to be concerned about and something to be feared. Yeah, the cry psychotics. In the Galapagos Islands, Darwin had identified fundamental laws that explained life's great diversity. Yep, that's Darwin science. studied the finches on the Galapagos. He's all organisms show variation, which is those organisms that had the most favorable variations How do you want to survive? the most likely to prevail. Exactly. I wonder if the Chrysocotus give this a Christian name, because a little crowd cross in there, as they give this flower a Christian name. They call it Passiflora incarnata. Darwin's entire theory of evolution. And the radical element was that he tied us in with every other living thing. That's why the Christocotics didn't like. Evolution's great danger. If humans were not made in God's image, then the literal truth of the Bible fell into doubt you, and Christian morality was undermined. Fairy tale, the nuts. Many people look at evolution as a way of saying that since we are all the products of an impersonal material process that gave rise to us, yep. and we're not really in control of ourselves. Yeah. Um, Nothing is good, there is no evil, there is no morality, and society is going to come unglued and will simply self destroy. Yes, stupid as people were. They are stupid. In his crusade, Brian knew he was supported by a Christian majority who had resisted teaching evolution in their own public schools. Throughout the Scopes trial, the prominent journalist H.L. Mencken called Brian a manipulator, preyed upon unfounded public fears. Brian's theory of natural selection through survival of the fittest had too often been misused to justify domination. So Charles Darwin was brought up in a Chrysacosis infected family in England. Interesting, he left for the expedition in 1831 in the Beagle. And the interesting thing about it is in the uh, 1831 or about the same year, 32 or so, this Chrysychosis infected men narrated his first vision to God, and that was the name is Joseph Smith, the Mormon prophet, the, found, the founder of Mormonism. Interesting, about the same year, you know, Charlie, uh, Charles Darwin took off, and at the same time, um, 
this guy announced his first vision. But he announced that the vision, Joseph Smith, that he had the vision in 1820 when he was 14 years old. And the guy was infected also with Christ's psychosis, you know, the Bible and all the nonsense. But he also, you know, uh, was consuming entheogens, learning from Algonquin Indians or natives. And, uh, you know, taking this stuff and he, his brain came up and he started seeing all the visions. Taking, uh, you know, mushrooms. <laughs> That's the sacrament of the Mormons at the time. Amazing they don't take them today. The evidence of what I say is true is for all to see, those who care to, uh, to search for the truth. Uh, religions are created by the ingestion of energy. And more deeply troubling, that humans descended from monkeys. Look at the idiot. Weekly with monkeys and more deeply with mice and more deeply with worms and more deeply with a single-celled organism. We're all related. Three and a half billion years ago. Exactly. This We're all is a counterintuitive idea. Right. So many of the people waving signs at the Scopes trial, this theory so very much threatened their very sense of who they were. No idea. See, they're so stupid, they don't understand it. Typical Christian ignoramuses, Christ psychotics. People with defective brains don't understand anything. They're clueless of science. And the problem is that this ignorance and psychosis continues to the day. In the 21st century, <laughs> people don't realize that we're created by, by a fuck, not a stork. We evolve. We have problem mutations. Sperm fertilizing an egg and all the mutations, radiation, and we get old and we die. And our only true life after death is bacteria eating our remains. Yeah, this is the truth, but it's, uh, it's hard to accept that people that are deluded and infected with Christ's psychosis or the religious beliefs. It's better to have the fairy tales because they cause dopamine in the brain and they feel good. But the realities of life, boy, they're hard to take, especially for us, evolved, mutated, crazy primates. Today, science teaches us Misters of the microscopic world, the cells, how they evolve, the miniature universes and worlds. We'll have them all over the place, bacteria and viruses. This is the evolution of this um, Shigella. It's kind of interesting. Yet this was an E. coli cell making a toxin. It turned out that this toxin was a Shigella toxin, yeah. which is the third evolution. most lethal toxin after tetanus. Natural toxins. genetic engineering. Then in 1981, much White better Sun, than our people artificial genetic engineering. Place became Nature does it symptoms. by evolution. 1982 in Michigan, again local hamburger place, uh, the distributor found E. coli 0157 in meat patties. 1993, now, these are new restaurants, North bacteria West. evolved. 100 people became ill, four kids died. Then in 1996, it appeared in contaminated apple juice and lettuce. And in addition to harboring a Shigella toxin gene, also acquired a gene that made it very resistant to acid. Yeah. So that that's why it evolved in evolution. Apple juice and lettuce and other acidic Evolution things. in action. And then in 1997, there was contamination in hamburger meat from a national right. distributor. Uh, and then they had to recall. It's a very... Yeah. It's not your thing as an intelligent designer, don't sense. Pathogen, as well, for the Christ psychotics of people that believe in God and all that, here's your chance. Let's prove that uh, God exists and prayers work. You know, there's some contaminated uh, with Shigella uh, food, like hamburgers or all those vegetables. <laughs> then eat them. Then if your stomach is start mumbling and you're ready to... Uh, have a shed propulsion, then pray. Before you have the shed propulsion, you pray to your zombie Jesus God <laughs> to cure you or remove the bacteria. And since he created all life on earth, he definitely created the bacteria too, right? <laughs> See what happens. Then you realize that you, if you believe in God, you're sick. You're no different than a schizophrenic. And Darwin was correct. Everything evolves. We only have to look at cells in the, mic in the microscope. 
or look at the viruses, bacteria, they all evolve, especially the HIV virus. <laughs> Some Christ psychotics believe is punishment from God for sin. <laughs> Imagine the lunacy. That will be a big part of the lecture that we'll talk about tomorrow. And it has a lot to do with the, with the different genetic makeup in individuals and with the immune system and how it actually reacts to, uh, to the virus. So it brings up a whole issue about, about the, the virus and mutations in the virus. Um, in fact, HIV is not a single virus, but HIV is a, it is a number of closely related viruses because Remember I talked about the HIV reverse transcriptase, that it makes, it makes errors as it's replicating the RNA into DNA, has poor proofreading mechanism, and so even within a single individual, the virus starts to evolve very rapidly. And some of those mutations can it's evolution for you, the people. way that the virus enters cells, the way that it replicates within cells. Most of that information is yet still to be fully discovered. Understanding all of the molecular events that are occurring and how particular mutations are affecting the ability of the virus to grow are really challenging questions that, that have real implications because of the, the possibility. If you can figure out what makes it harder for a virus to grow, maybe that gives you then an opportunity to be able to develop some kind of therapeutic intervention to try and, to try and uh, um, replicate that. And it's why she's this week's CNN hero. Back in 1990s, I believed that the AIDS was a punishment from God. She got it. When I personally tested HIV positive, <laughs> she got it. God, how could this happen to me? See, and she's still a really believer? I fasted and prayed. She's schizophrenic. Hoping that I would be healed. Yeah, sure. I lost my job. My husband lost his job. The landlord wanted us out of his house. Of course, people are, you know, sick, have a problem with the brain. I realized that I'd been born. Yeah. My name is Patricia. What do you think it will happen if this brilliant professor, I, I give him a, a bacterium that will infect his brain, just like it happened in schizophrenia or affect his temporal lobes? You think he'd be able to talk about AIDS, virus, and in, so, in so brilliant terms? What about if I give him LSD? Or he can have like seven Cuba Libras or something like that. He will not be able to think straight. Be just like Christians or Muslims or anybody infected with religious psychosis. He won't be able to understand. He will see visions and things. And that's my point. Religious beliefs are mental illness is a dysfunction, it's an affliction of the brain not needed in this 21st century. And that's a problem today, causing all the problems. In Libya, all over, the Christian fundamentalists are nuts. Uh, people like, uh, like Phelps and Sarah Pellin and, and uh, Michelle Bachmann and many senators are Christ psychotics. People of the Tea Party are completely theotarded, they're stuck in the Middle Ages. And this is the problem, this is going to screw us up. It's going to destroy the country if we don't put these people in mental institutions or define believing God as a mental illness. And that's very much the truth. Pachi de Orombo.